Today on Locked on Buckeyes, the focus for the entire show is the head coach in Columbus, Ryan Day. And we're going to answer this question. Should Ryan Day be fired? You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeyes fans? Welcome back to the episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Tuesday, November 28th in the year 2023, and today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. During today's episode, we heard him last week. He's back with us here once again. It's my guy, Jeff Hunt. And Jeff, the floor is yours. But before we get there, man, that loss stings. Yeah, Jay, we got to quit meeting like this. Um, <laughs> the, the last time I, well, I started podcasting in 2019, that's also the last year that I got to celebrate, you know, a win in the game. Uh, this was a tough one. Um, but my basic thought on it was from start to finish, I, I never really had a lot of hope, and that's kind of sad, but I just really didn't. Yeah. And, but my biggest takeaway is there's two camps here. If if you feel that Michigan slash Penn State are legit top 10 to top five outstanding programs on the equal with Georgia, Alabama, you know, basically that's it right now. And then you take away from the, you know, a six point loss in this game is like, wow, you know, we, we, we hung in there with the best of the best. The other camp is people like me. I don't know if Michigan's really a great team. I think they're a really good team. I don't think they're a ton better than they've been really the last decade. Um, you know, people forget these games have been close. Like yeah. Urban Meyer played some good Michigan teams. We mm-hmm. won in retrospect. Some of them got out of hand. And I think we forget that Michigan has some good teams going into that. Ohio State was a little better, a little tougher, a little more prepared, you know, better at the quarterback position. Um, you know, no offense to McCord, but that's just the truth. So I think we kind of lost sight of like I really what I saw Saturday for the third year in a row was a a slight step back from Ohio State that they couldn't afford. They went from a, a team that won in overtime a few years ago to a team that couldn't quite get it done now. I don't know if if I see this, you know, if I see, you know, it, let's say Michigan gets through Iowa, makes it to the playoffs, runs through the national championship, blast Georgia, I will come on your show and tell everybody I'm wrong. Everything's fine in Columbus. We were the second or third best team in the country. We need to roll it back. I don't personally think that's going to happen. So, like, probably the most disappointing part is – not being surprised at the outcome. You know, that outcome on Saturday was one of those games where you watch it, you predict it, you think you have a good feel on it, but then you watch the game play, first quarter, second quarter. Didn't really seem like Ohio State's players' body language showed that they believed that they could win. And I don't like saying that about the team that not only I cover, but also just for fans of Ohio State. So our hearts are tied into this game, different than watching the Iron Bowl or the Apple Cup or the Egg Bowl or any of the other bowl games, Texas, Texas Tech, anything else. Like this game has us and hits us harder than any other game. Yeah, I'm a big body language guy and I do that in, I mean, I cover high school sports here in the county I live in and I can look out there and see, hey, do you believe or do you not believe? Sometimes by simply your body language. It's really clear in high school athletes. It's not as clear in college athletes, but it's still clear there as well. NFL players, I mean, you can see it. NBA, you can tell when a guy believes in his jump shot or when a guy does not believe in his jump shot. I don't know if Ohio State players after the first couple series truly believed that like, as a consensus in totality that the majority of them truly believed that they could win the game, which makes it seem a whole lot worse when you lose by six on the road yeah. to Michigan on the hills of them getting caught cheating, when their body language says, hey, like, we're here playing a game, but do we truly believe we can win? Body language wasn't there, man. That's a bad sign for a team that's undefeated in the biggest game of the year. Yeah, and it, it was really weird. And, that you know, that's part of what we're going to talk about with Day here in a second. This is a, this is kind of a, 
um, you know, a repeat offense. Um, one thing I want to say about, about the high state players, I want to be clear on your show. When people talk about like a team not being tough or getting pushed around and all that, I want to be clear. I don't think it's because the kids go out there and don't try and they're not tough. Correct. It's it's no different than me. If I go into a street fight with a person that outweighs me by 30 pounds, it's not because I wasn't tough enough for the fight. I didn't get beat because I was I was scared. I got beat because I I I couldn't beat the guy in front of me. So I want to be clear. Like I never question the toughness. These keys, these kids go out there, they laid it on the line and, and they didn't come up with the win. It's not a, it's not a personal reflection on them as a player. It's, but it is true about the overall talent level of the team that they just, they, if they do, if you see them getting pushed around, it's not because of a fear toughness. It's sometimes the guy ahead of you is a, you know, is a, is a better player player bigger faster stronger whatever whatever the word is so like that that's the important thing about this is this is not about the players on the field no it's not it's it's one of the weird things about this game with McCord his ups and downs throughout the season and even in this game slow start in the first quarter then all of a sudden he starts dialing it in and hitting the right guys You're like okay cool and Henderson doesn't really break anything loose but they find occasionally find something in the running game all of a sudden, I think the tide kind of turned at the unfortunate injury to big Zach Zinter, the big offensive lineman. I think that's when Michigan started to realize, hey, we can impose our will. And that's yeah. when they start being started to change, change their way. But, Jeff, I don't want to do this again next year. Like, you started yeah. podcasting in 2019. <laughs> Maybe I'm the problem, Jeff, because Ohio State has not beat Michigan since I started hosting this podcast. So, I know. I, look, I fans, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I know it's not me. I'm not on the field. I'm being sarcastic, no, but it may it, be. You the start truth. thinking those things. Yeah. And, and here's the here's difference in that game. I know this isn't about that game, but this is a reflection of like, you know, everything that culminated. Um, it was another, and you touched on it. Um, once Michigan, we never, they, they never got Michigan out of their game. And that is right. literally what a coaching staff is supposed to do. Jim Harbaugh has coached the same type of team as long as I've watched him from, you know, San Diego State to Stanford to the NFL. You know what you're getting. And this is the third year in a row that Ryan Day didn't have an answer for it. He didn't have a plan for it. He he acted like he reacted instead of attacking. Um, and really, like, if we're going to talk about Ryan Day's legacy, the one game that he took it to a team – was Clemson in that you know that playoff win that really has saved his job to this point if we're you know if we're going to be honest about it that you know if you want to go back to last year great performance against Georgia he got some slack but I think we see now watching CJ Stroud in the NFL what that game was really about against yeah. Georgia last year yeah. I don't think he can do that with this this team this year I don't think he can hang with Georgia like that and so it's like we played right into their hands. Like this team was built, like Michigan is built to beat Ohio State, and they play right in their hands, and everything works. I said before the show, when when Ohio State scored, which was awesome, and they kicked the ball off with like a little over eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, I basically knew it was over, which is a shame. In college football, it's not like that. But Michigan was like, nope, we we're gonna we're gonna stay true to ourselves. We're gonna you know we're gonna methodically take this down the field. We're gonna chew all this, and they even stole three points out of it. Sure, um, I I really honestly thought that they would wind up kneeling on the ball. Um, if I was a Michigan fan, I'd have said you should have went for it instead of the field goal, and then the game would have been over. I know that's not the right decision, but that's how confident I was in what they could do. Like. His, his, the improvements on defense were awesome. I do, you know, give Day some credit. He did, you know, they did go out and get a defensive coordinator that really did change, save the season, honestly, like completely save the season. Um, you know, offense took a huge step back when the quarterback took a step back. Um, you know, the depth isn't there. You, you know, you'll talk about that here in a second. So it's just all these little things that you can't give up. And basically the difference is you don't have the Justin Fields out there right. to save you. You don't have the C.J. Stroud out there to bail you out. Um, and take advantage like, yeah, let's, you can, we can spend all off season watching these awesome hype videos and talking about how good the receiving core is. If you don't have a plan to get them open and you don't get them the ball, it doesn't matter. You know, thank goodness. Marvin Harrison showed up like an absolute pro this year, laid it on the line. And then when he didn't have to, he could have. He could have took the easy way out, and you know, at, at any moment, just you know, stepped out. He's going to be the top, the first receiver off the board in the NFL. He didn't. So like. But 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 without that, I just like you know you know we're we're an inch away from you know Notre Dame. We're a, we're a holding call away from Penn State. Like we could be looking at you know three losses this year. Then we'd be having a whole different conversation. Um, you know, coming back next year, you're not super ex you're not super excited from what you saw. 
because you didn't get to see a lot of the advancement of the young guys. That's another thing on day. It's like, man, get these guys in there, teach them how to play. Like, you know, I, I understand losing ransom was terrible this year. That really, that really affected the team. Um, but you know, we just keep hearing about the young guys and just, I think there's, it's another one of those two camps, Jay, if you're, if you're, you know, pretty much a strictly high state fan, you enjoy the games. That's great. Maybe watch some big 10 games. I think that's a camp. I think if you're lunatics like me and Jay Stevens and watch teams from all around <laughs> the country, to describe us. <laughs> watch, watch replays of LSU every week, Florida state every week, all, like you see what these athletes look like. You see what they look like at the linebacker position. You see what they look like at the tight end position. Like some of the stuff that Georgia can do, you know, with their jumbo packages, just, just, just staggeringly good. Seeing some of the fun stuff, honestly, that Michigan did the other day with that four receiver set, you know, out to the, mm-hmm. like it, it's all these little innovations, you know, that you can do when, when you're a team with the better athletes, this is what you're supposed to do, as opposed to Ryan Day pretty much plays kind of the same offense that most teams in the country do. But when you have the better athletes, you're supposed to take advantage of imposing your will. And we just haven't saw it all season. Jeff, you made a comment about Lathan Ransom and also about Ryan Day. And I'm going to tackle those next here as Lockdown Buckeyes rolls on on a Tuesday. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So, Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn. In jobs, LinkedIn jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's free and easy to create a job post on LinkedIn jobs. So once you create your job post, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So, Jeff, before we get to the Ryan Day question, do you think Lathan Ransom would have helped out Excuse me. Let me let me rephrase that. Do you think Ohio State would have won the game if Latham Ransom was able to play? I won't say one because I, I know he would have. Been, and here's why: I think Ransom would have pushed Michigan to play a different game, a little more yeah. desperate. Yeah. Which is, but what I said to you earlier. I don't think that Michigan actually had to show everything they had to beat Ohio State. They didn't really have to pull out all the tricks. They didn't have to turn McCarthy loose to win this game. Like Mm-mm. they, they now again that almost bit them in the end, but it didn't. Um, I think they played. A, if I was a Michigan fan, I'd say they played a little safe and too safe for you know my you know comfort. But it worked out for them. That doesn't matter now. I think there was. I think there's more to this Michigan offense that you'll see when they get to the playoffs, there's more there. I've seen more all year with play action passes and some stuff that they do that they didn't even feel the need to use against the high states where I think ransom would have made them do that. Does that make them turn over the ball or something like that? Possibly. So definitely a difference. Uh, if nothing, three point difference, but I, I don't, I don't think they would have won the game. I just think, I think it would have just changed the way Michigan had to play, which would have been a huge advantage. I am saying that. I agree because when you have Ran- Ransom and Proctor at safety, you bring Sonny yeah. Styles closer. You don't play Cody Simon as much. And I talked early in the week, Jeff, last week about how Ohio State's versatility with Sonny Styles and Cody Simon mm-hmm. and even Jordan Hancock. You can run a 4-3, 4-2-5, mm-hmm. and there's so many wrinkles you can have right there. Didn't really help them. Like, we're, we saw the 4-3. We saw Jordan Hancock. You saw 
nothing really helped them in the ways that I thought it would benefit them because Michigan was kind of in control of the entire game. So as much as yeah. I would like to say, yes, Ohio State would have won if Ransom was on the field, I don't know if that changes how they had a, like a couple 10-plus play drives, four minutes was one. I think the other one was like seven minutes. Like I don't know if his presence shortens those drives, causes him to not be scoring drives. I don't know. He's not playing deep line or linebacker. He's playing safety. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, it, that was the thing. Again, it's game plan. It's game plan. It's, it's just another game that day's team went into this and it looked like they were going to wait and see how the game was going to be played instead of taking it to the other team. If you, if you take it to the other team, you run your game plan and you're wrong. That's one thing. But if you, if you go into a game, it, you know what it looked like? It looked like when teams play Ohio state and they're trying not to get blown out. That's what this game looked like. It's like, great. You know, you you kept it within six. It doesn't look as bad as it could have, but you never really took a chance. Like I I thought the even you know the last couple drives they should have been airing the ball out. I would rather see an interception, even an interception return for a touchdown. You get beat by twenty again. You gave your team a chance, and I think I think he played it close to the vest and hoped that Michigan would make a mistake. But Michigan has not made mistakes all year in these situations. Like I understand that against Rutgers or Indiana, they might fumble. They might, Michigan has just not made the mistakes and you never forced them to have to make a mistake. Like now last year when they started that game, that was the team we wanted to see. Like they, they went after it and, and then, but then the defense let them down and yeah. you know, but they had CJ Stroud to, to have that. They, this year they kind of went into it like, man, let's just, Kind of went into it like they did Notre Dame. Uh, Michigan ain't Notre Dame, and that was the difference in the game. You know that that was that that was the whole difference. And uh, Penn State the same way. You know they attack Penn State, and they're like, I don't think this offense can score. If, I, if Penn State could have been able to score that game, we're talking about would they have adjusted? Would they would they have spread it out? We talk about all these receivers all year. Um, you know a lot of the difference too. Like you got a kid like JJ McCarthy. He's mobile in the pocket. He scrambled. Honestly, he scrambles for that one first down when he's almost sacked. I believe it was Sawyer, I think, had him. I'm not sure. Uh, he scrambles out of it, gets, you know, whatever, 20 yards the first down. It kind of ended the game as to where – I'll just say this. I don't want to be – I don't want to just call out names yeah, here because yeah. I want to I want to try to be positive, but our quarterback just isn't that type of quarterback. No. And you might need that one scramble yeah. instead of lobbing it and, and getting an interception. Like, I, I'm, you know, it's – Kyle McCord played his heart out, and he played pretty good in the, in the circumstances. But – when you're Ohio State, you should have NFL quarterbacks behind him, in front of like. Every, there ought to be NFL players all over the field. I know you want to talk about the linebackers a little bit, and so it's this is a bigger issue when we start to talk about the big question is what has been going on in the last three to four years to put them in a position to where we've got a running back at linebacker and a linebacker at running back, and we're we're you know we're using duct tape and you know popsicle sticks to <laughs> to, to to keep a national championship contender alive, like yeah. Why don't like I remember 2002 national championship game? AJ Hawk was a freshman. Guy got hurt. AJ Hawk is who stepped in. An NFL linebacker stepped in. A couple years later, Lauren Nidus has to step in for Hawk or yeah. the, for um, Carpenter as a backup. Like that's who the freshman backups were. NFL players. And I just I'm not sure I see that on the field right now. But a real shout out, real quick, because you mentioned a couple guys, Igmanosa and Hancock, both. Oh my gosh. Really, really. Oh my really gosh. Played their butts off in that game. I mean, just got at it. All you know, I was I was really impressed with because they get tar Igmanosa gets picked on a lot. Hancock, you know, he's the other guy. I really thought they fought and fought through blocks and really just again, all these kids really tried their butts off and, and just came up a little short. This isn't about their career. This isn't a reflection on them. This is a reflection on why didn't they have help? Why don't they have a guy behind them? Like, why do they gotta like why do they gotta play a little out of position sometimes? All these questions that are supposed to fall in this. We're talking what maybe thirty million dollar coaching staff at this point. You know, you know what I mean. Like, th th there's the problem here. This isn't this isn't a Mac school. This, uh, this isn't Cincinnati trying to fight through the playoffs a few years ago. This was supposed to be one of the top three, probably top three programs in the United States. Jeff, when it comes to this school, Ryan Day's the head coach. I don't want to say he's the only problem, but something he is doing is a problem. We'll dive into that next year as Lockton Buckeyes rolls on. This episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you 
against those pesky numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch those winnings roll in. Price picks is the most fun I've had, winning up to 25 times my money this football season. Quick with the draws, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Price picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Price Fix offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts. Go to pricefix.com slash locked on couch and use code locked on couch for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to pricefix.com slash locked on couch and use code locked on couch for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Fix daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is also brought to you by. Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And did you know Billiards Plus has top-of-the-line grills with up to 30-year warranties? That's longer than most roofs. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Alhassen, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and the Griddle. That could very well be the last grill you own. The perfect gift for any occasion is in stock at Billiards Plus. Go big with an awesome pool table or shuffleboard table or a little more modest with a dartboard or poker table. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and even outdoor entertainment needs. And the people at Billiards Plus are the best part of the experience. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will take amazing care of you. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Jeff, I've been saving this for a long time. Had a good conversation thus far. It's going to continue. There are problems in Columbus. And I'm not saying you're a Mac school problem where your budget isn't big enough or your facilities aren't great enough. None of that. When you look at Alabama, Georgia as being the standard. I know USC has done some good things. Lincoln Rowley, no, not in this conversation. Or (laughs) Texas or Oklahoma, no, not in this conversation. To me, the gold standard in this sport. Right now, there's two. There's one coach, two teams. Really, two coaches, two teams, but I just put Nick Saban above Kirby Smart for numerous reasons. The coaches, Kirby Smart, Nick Saban. That's the standard of coaches right now. The standard of school, Alabama and Georgia. Every offseason, Jeff, I'm about to get irritated because we had the same conversation. Those guys <laughs> look better than Ohio State's guys. Now, it's normally a conversation about O-line, or excuse me, D-line, linebackers, or, or like defensively, their guys look different, look healthier, um, look beefier, like all of those things. Offensively, it's the same thing. Quarterback got benched to Alabama, came back and threw a phenomenal fourth and goal on the 31-yard line, dart to the corner, touchdown, Bama wins the game. You got a guy in Carson Beck people really didn't believe in. All of a sudden, he's leading Georgia once again, 12 in a regular season. You lose your starting tight end, Brock Bowers, who was in the Heisman conversation. Oh, as you talked about it, they have a stable full of really good tight ends that probably their the backup could come to Ohio State and maybe start of a Cade Stover. Hopefully feathers, but that's just the type of talent that they have there. Why are we having the same conversation over and over about Ryan Day in Columbus that there are schools in the South whose players consistently play better and even by the eye test look better than those in Ohio State? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it's been like when Urban was there, like at his peak, he was really starting to get the athletes. They looked different. They acted different. They were bigger, faster, stronger and all this. And then we we just regressed on it. I mean, again, I, I feel bad to say this about the guys, but it, it really is true. Like it's it's a bit of a mismatch. And when I watch these other schools, I'm like, especially some of the size and speed at, you know, linebacker, some of the outside edge positions. I'm like, th- these guys, it's, it's a whole new world. Like what? Just – Anybody, like, do yourself a favor. Just go watch Georgia play defense and attack the ball and attack yeah. the run game. Yes. It's violent. It's fast. And, and again, Ohio State tries to do some of that. They're just it, – it is what it is at some point. Like, like you brought up a great name, Cade Stover. 
can't say enough good things about the guy. He's late. He was a defensive guy. He's playing tight end. Yeah. Turns himself into a really good tight end. Does a great job. I watched a ton of tape on him this year. Every, like his execution, everything he did on the field. Great. But he's not an NFL tight end. He's not a. He's not a. He's not one of these. The crazy act- thing is, he's probably going to get drafted. He's maybe probably going to go, and he's third, he's third probably going to make best. maybe fourth or he, fifth round, and he's going to make a team because yes. he obviously plays hard. He's smart. All the intangibles. I mean, I just I don't know how else to say. It, but he's not. He wouldn't play for Georgia. No. I, I'm just saying, he, like he no. wouldn't. And then we we talked about this last year with the defensive guys. How many of these guys would really play for Georgia? I think. I think maybe like you know now Hancock Igmanosa could be trained to play like so they did they did grade up but like still Chambers you know he's he's not a Georgia guy he's not an Alabama guy like these guys come out you know into into their true freshman year they develop and then by the time they get to sophomore junior they're NFL guys they're attacking they're smart you know it's not just that they're big and strong I want to be clear about these these you know other guys we're talking about they play smart football these yes, Al- Alabama Georgia have some. Georgia might, has one of the smartest defense I've ever seen in college football. When you watch them, <laughs> the things that they do and the adjustments that they make on the fly, on the field, like they're really trained football players. And, you know, we would say the same thing about like the high state's wide receiving core is really smart. That's a great core for high state. This isn't all negative. Like, um, you know, they're a step above most teams in the country. They're blocking, they're smart, they're, you know, their choice routes, you know, and all those things. So like that is something, you know, that a high state's doing, but, but this is again where it falls on day. Like, what are like? If you want to come out and tell me you can't get the guys, then that's another reason. Like, okay, we got to get somebody who can because it's a high state. We know you can get the guys. Like, I don't. Want, they've got like the second most players in the NFL, so I don't want to talk about like can't get the guys. But like, why can't you fill these positions when if I can see it, Jay Stevens can see it? Why are we? Why are we taking? Like, why are we changing positions, changing sides of the ball? Um, you know, best linebacker for what at least two years now is Eichenberg. This is a guy. Got super smart, got better and better and better, played his heart out, and still is not. I don't think he's a starting NFL linebacker. As to where High State should just always just accidentally have a starting NFL linebacker for at least a few years, you know what I mean? Like even a bust, I would take. Yeah. Um. So it's just, but so where is Day on? The, and through the summer, what is Day seeing? Like, what is he not seeing? Why doesn't he see what? That that's always the question. My biggest problem with Ryan Day is like, why are you going into the season? Everything that me and me and Jay Stevens talk about right now, if Ryan Day is a coach next year, will be the same issues. And we'll be like nine months ago or eight months ago, we literally pointed out every issue that you're having and you didn't correct it. You didn't address it. They, I mean, I think Jim Knowles has corrected a lot of problems, but yeah. Jim Knowles is gonna have trouble going out and getting defensive guys. It's gotta be a group effort. Like all these guys, these guys. You know, I know next year with 12 team playoffs, it's going to be a little easier. And I think, well, we'll talk about it here in a minute. I think that's probably going to save, um, you know, the, his career to this point. Yeah. But um, I just like, why isn't, why aren't you seeing what we're seeing the deficiencies? Like, why aren't you more ready? Why aren't the backups? Why didn't you kill the transfer portal? Um, you know, is it you? Is it like, because Urban Meyer did. I mean, Urban Meyer would own the transfer portal. I'm surprised oh, he gosh. doesn't want to come. I'm surprised he doesn't want to come back just because of it, to be totally honest with you. Dude, so when it comes to Ryan Day in Columbus, and yes, he is a problem. Part of the part of his coaching is the problem. He's won fifty yeah. plus games. He's lost to I did this on the show, Jeff, literally off the top of my head, not even trying to realize I was spitballing. Lost to Michigan three times. Lost yep. to Oregon. That game is still one of the oddest losses That's, in his career. Yep. Um, he lost to Clemson. Lost to Georgia. Lost to Alabama. So you lose it to once in the Natty. Yep. Twice in the playoff. Once a fluke loss week two, which Urban had that against Virginia Tech back in what yep. 2014, week two against Virginia yep. Tech. So, like, I understand those things are going to happen occasionally, but definitely have this long laundry list of, of losses on his resume. But the ones that hurt the most are the ones against Michigan. I would even say, like, as much as Clemson, that loss stings or stung back then, that this is going to hurt for way longer. Then that yeah. one does, even because Ryan Day came back the next year and just smashed uh, Clemson. Before we get to that question, Jeff, here's the thought that you said earlier that kind of got me. You mentioned Georgia and last year's game. Why does Ryan Day need a month off to have the best coaching game of his career? A month off before Clemson in 2019. If J.K. Yeah. Dobbins doesn't get hurt, there's a good chance Ohio State wins that game. Yeah, And Ryan Day did a phenomenal job of coaching. But also 2020, a month off, all of a sudden it's like, why don't we see this Ryan Day every day? And then lost the next week, but a week and a half later to Alabama. 2021, 
I forget, no, it was a Rose Bowl year. And, they, well, that month off didn't really help them. They almost lost to Utah. But then yeah. last year, a month off before Georgia, w- you and I were wondering, why didn't we see this Ryan Day every single week? And so I think before we get to the question, Jeff, is is Ryan Day a good week-to-week coach? Because I think that's a big way to look at it before answering the question about if he should be fired. Yeah. And, and, and again, I'll just say no, like, because we see so many times he just like these teams like aren't prepared for a team in the week and then they gut it out and then they make some big plays because they got better athletes. It looks better than it is. Um, he's had some good coaching, but if you really look at his, like what we're going to call the good victories, like outside yeah. of outside of those big ones that you meant, well, the big one that you mentioned Clemson is what we're talking about. One, yeah. one big victory and, and how good they played against Georgia outside of that, the big wins, like whether it's Penn state or whatever, it was still them just playing their game and winning. And I know that sounds dumb, but like they didn't come up with something different and 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 run through Penn State or whatever. They played their same game and they were just a little bit better than Penn State. They Notre tried Dame, it against Notre Bruce. Dame was the same way this year. Notre Dame was the same game. way. They just played their game and and really, I mean, just I mean, really didn't he didn't coach better or anything. His players showed up and McCord had a great great drive. Not ever going to take that away from him. Um, but um, but it's still never like oh wow, completely outcoached the other team as opposed to when you watch these other programs. And and I want to say this too. When I say Ryan Day, we're talking about a coaching staff. I understand that Day is not coaching every position. I understand he's not doing all the film watching. Like these other guys gotta gotta pick up on tendencies. They gotta have game plans. Day is supposed to put in a direction for a game and be like here's where I see the path to victory and then talk to his coaching staffs. And then they come up with like, okay, we can exploit this number. Like if, when you watch a team play Ohio state, the first thing they do is throw at Igbenosa because they think that's the weak spot in the secondary. He's held up really well, but they throw right at him immediately. Yeah, they do. Whether that's right or wrong. Day never looks like he's trying to exploit a weakness. He looks mm-hmm. like we're going to play our game and, and, and see what happens. And they, he didn't get bailed out the other day. I think if Correct. Justin Fields is on the out there, they win. I think they beat Michigan. I think if CJ Stroud's out there, they beat Michigan, and we're, we're not having the conversation. But they didn't, and, and you know what I mean. Like nothing. I don't. What, I, nothing special that like do you see except for the, the QB position shows up. That that's been the Ryan Day story. Jeff, the question: The floor is yours. No, 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 no. I normally go guest first. I'll go first here. I'll go first. Thank you. Last question of the day, Jeff, and we both know where we're going with this. Should Ryan Day be fired? And part of my answer is a bad part of how I view this. I'm going to say no. The 12 team playoff is going to save him, but also the lack of elite coaches in the sport are also going to save him. Because if I look at it, do I think Dabo Sweeney will come to Columbus and take things up a notch? It's possible, but Ryan Day's done a lot better over the last few years than Dabo Sweeney. I also understand that Dabble Sweeney in Ohio State, they probably don't see eye to eye. Well, the fans don't want Dabble Sweeney here. But, I mean, it's a realistic question. Brent Venables is not with Oklahoma. He's not going anywhere. But I think a couple years ago, I would have gladly taken Brent Venables as he had a coach at Ohio State, knowing it's going to be a little bit of a rougher path to get him up to where Ohio State standard is. Should Ryan Day be fired? I say no. One more year. If you lose to Michigan next year, fire him in the, lo- in the locker room on the field. Don't care. You got to go. You, you have to go. Um, but also, it's just the bad thing. Ryan Day's a really good coach. But the problem is, Jeff, outside of Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, I don't know if there's another coach in the sport that I think could come in and do better immediately than Ryan Day. So it's one, I don't think Ryan Day's time in Columbus is done. Two, the 12 team playoff is going to save him next year. Cause I mean, Ohio State can lose the game and still make the playoff. Like that's that's an easy thing for the from here on out. But also the lack of elite coaches that I do believe are better than Ryan Day are going to help him keep his job. Some of you will say Jim Harbaugh's a better coach. He ain't coming to Columbus. And if he was, y'all would want him there anyway. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big Jim Harbaugh guy. Um, I don't want to play that brand of football um at all. I like what Ryan Day does offensively, some of the creativity create creativity that he has but no i don't want hardball in columbus but i don't think he should be fired yes i know part of it is hinging on who's available or who could be available jimbo fisher's available <laughs> buddy go back to tallahassee well you can't go there they're doing better without you um no like no there it's weird man because like i was really comfortable saying yes however 
when I look and see who's out there and how good he of a coach he is, I'm kind of leaning towards no. But next year could be his last year at Columbus, even if the Buckeyes beat Michigan. I really do think if he loses a couple times in one of them not being to Michigan, he could be gone because we're turning into Miami under Larry Coker. And I don't – I personally – don't want that to be the football team in Columbus. Yeah, you just said it for me, Jay. I'll just go ahead and say it. I'll, just, I'll say it the, the nicest way. Walker Bailey said it better today. I think it's just time they part ways. I think Ryan Day is a quality football coach. I think he's in a bad – I don't think he's in the right position for him. I don't think he should be out of coaching. I don't want him punished. That's what I mean. When we talk about should you fire Ryan Day, that's why I say move on. I don't want Ryan Day punished. He did a great job. He did an, you know, an all right job. I got a lot of flaws with him. We talked about it. But I do think it's time to move on because it's just for some reason it's either not because he's never I think the biggest thing is like he came through as a coordinator. He got the job. Jim Harbaugh tried to tell us, right? Jim Harbaugh tried to tell us that like he got handed the keys to the Lamborghini. He didn't have to earn it. He didn't. Jim Harbaugh going to San Diego State and making them better is what made Jim Harbaugh who he is now. And they didn't do it like they needed to coach another school he needed to get kicked in the teeth quite a few times he needed to outsmart the other guy instead of leaning on the talent that he had then when you get really good at it, like urban meyer coming from utah then when you get to talent you're like not only can i outplay you but i can out coach you and if you can do that then you're unstoppable uh day hasn't learned the out coaching you know a part yet is he he's going to be a good football coach he's going to go somewhere I, I still i've always predicted he's going to go to the nfl and probably be a pretty good offensive coordinator when he doesn't have to worry about all the bs of being a head fo football coach and everybody everybody's biggest worry is like well who do you replace him with i'm not worried about stealing a guy from another school i'm not you you're ohio state you have all the resources on the planet if you like like if you don't Every week to week, scout the best coordinators, the best, the you know, best coaches in the country, the best coaches. Just like when they got Jim Trestle, shame on you. Like if you're so stuck on Ryan Day that you didn't go out there and look, and you don't have guys in mind that you think could could be the next, you know, Dan Lanning up in Oregon, or one, then shame on you because that's that's how college coaching works now. You get the guy that's like out thinking the room smart he engages with the players and day is close to that i understand i'm like he's he's 90 percent of you know what they need but like it, it might even just if nothing else it might just be a little stale right now like he might not be able to get out of this rut uh, yeah, it's just a real thing um i agree with you i don't think he's gonna be fired i also think harbaugh is gonna be gone next year too but we also have oregon usc washington we <laughs> might find out exactly <laughs> what level ohio state's on <laughs> next year Jeff, I really like, do think there's a good chance Ohio State and Clemson are currently on the same level. At, well, next year. Next year yeah. we'll be on the same level. How people get mad at Clemson for having 10 and 2 regular seasons. Mm -hmm. There is a good chance Ohio State, if Ryan Day's there over the next, over the next couple of years, could be 10 and 2 and still beat Michigan. Because the Big Ten is easily maybe tap well, Ooh. the top of it maybe better than the SEC. I think top to bottom, the SEC is still going to be the better conference, especially when you add in Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. But the top of the Big Ten will rival the top of the SEC next year. Jeff, I don't like people being fired, which kind of goes into, into – um, Oh, believe I, me, I didn't want this. I didn't want this. No, no. But I, I like how you say it. And I think if I went away from the mindset of who's out there, I probably would say move on from Ryan Day. But who's out there and who should who might be available does go into my answer right now. That is Jeff Hunt. I don't know if he's full time at the Off the Ball Network or full time podcasting anymore. Yes, but I'm back, maybe. <laughs> he is back podcasting. You, you can follow him on X, formerly known as Twitter at jhunt 6 You can follow me on the same platform at jstevens07. This is a Tuesday show. Locked on Book Guys got a few more shows this week. No post game. No live shows this weekend. Might have to get Jeff back on here on Sunday evening to recap where the Buckeyes will be playing their bowl game in that matchup that will be happening about a month from this weekend. This has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Tuesday. I'll see you next time.